Twelve years ago, hospice nurse Joanne Chitwood first realized her dream of producing My Gift Myself, a comprehensive program for training hospice volunteers. Talking to them, they don't interrupt, they don't look at their watch. They don't Since like its release, know. over 1,000 hospice programs have benefited from Joanne's heartfelt training. Now, Joanne has created a completely updated and expanded My Gift Myself series. Each of the seven DVDs presents one class session as Joanne directs the training from the video. With each session, students are directed to a comprehensive student manual for reading assignments, personal and interactive exercises, and a skill check testing. That affirmation of the value of a person at the end of their life that we're looking for when we're providing end-of-life care. The unique blend of exercises presented on the video, in the manual, and with classroom participation will challenge each student to look inside themselves and create personal awareness and growth. My Gift Myself students learn about themselves so they may provide more effective support for their patients and families. Reaching beyond hospice, the new My Gift Myself series becomes a core program for teaching excellence in end-of-life care. The training is enhanced with incisive interviews with pioneers in the end-of-life field such as Dr. Richard Payne, Dr. Eric Cassell, and Dr. Donald Shoemaker. The wonderful thing about hospice from the very moment it started uh, is that when people are in hospices, their disease isn't worth being cared for. As a matter of fact, that's the big advantage because they can't do anything about disease and they have to make improvements, they only can work with the person. There's also this misperception that hospice hastens death, you know, that, you know, the, you, you shun it there to this place to die. They don't feed you. They, they just let you die, right? When the reality is, you know, and this is what I really emphasize, particularly to the medical students and residents that I talk to, that doing high-quality palliative care and hospice care is actually about really attaining the, the best of what being, what doctoring and medical care is about. And it's People wait too long to come into hospice. Um, and that's a very big issue. Fully one third of the patients that come into hospice die within seven days. And they get great care for the most part and, it, and it's wonderful and families are very satisfied. But I've often wondered what happens, what's been happening in those patients' lives before they get into hospice. Each major chapter topic is illustrated with emotionally gripping personal stories from a wide variety of end-of-life caregivers like Larry Hansen. Uh, morals have to do with the great shoulds and oughts of just about every great culture. Uh, you shouldn't kill people, you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't steal, uh, you should act with integrity. Lisa I tell Benton. the story to people and it doesn't sound like anything's happening in it, but it just is the very first visit I ever made. And I remember um, going to visit this client on a, it was just a gorgeous, sunny and autumn day. And Helen Frenzel. Uh, the, the team understands. Um, when I go into a room of, of a patient that has died recently in the last hour or two, and there's no family member there. Joanne personally presents a number of training segments on the video. Welcome to Chapter 6 of the My Gift Myself series. In this session, we're going to focus on the fact that grief is not a problem to be solved. It's simply a statement that you've loved someone. And as we work through this, we're going to be looking at the fact that grief is a process. It's not a, an end point. It's, there's, there are things that have to happen as you go through the stages of grief. And we're going to look at all of those. All While animation and video graphics illustrate key teaching points. Physiological needs, safety and security, danger, whether that danger is from the inside or from the outside of the body, 
Safety threats occur just from the disease process the person is facing. Other safety threats can be some kind of dangerous element in the physical environment, rugs to trip over, lighted cigarettes around oxygen. We can provide much needed information. There's a criminal riding around loose out there. We who work in end of life care call him the robber. This robber isn't the normal garden variety kind that breaks into people's homes in the dead of night and steals insignificant things like material possessions. No. This Volunteers are one of the most effective ways to provide quality end of life care and they deserve the best training and preparation that you can deliver. I'm sending you out with my blessings to use the skills that you've learned to provide care to the terminally ill and their families. Visit www.bordermountain.com to order your copies of My Gift Myself DVDs, coordinator's manuals, and student manuals.